Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Sage Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Gillette, the creator of the Sage Leadership Framework and obviously host of this show. I'm excited to have our guest on today, who's Daniel Alphon. And we're going to talk about LinkedIn and how to spruce up your LinkedIn profile so you can use it to actually generate some revenue, new customers, clients for your business. Daniel Alphon is the author of Build a LinkedIn Profile for Business Success. So that is our focus He's going to help us build our profiles so that your business can have more success or your career path can have more success. I'm really excited about that. He joined LinkedIn in early 2004 and publishes articles, interviews, and exclusive content about advanced LinkedIn strategies to clients and subscribers. You can find him on his website at www.danielalfon.com. I'm very excited to have Daniel on the show and for you to gain these powerful insights and helpful insights from what it is to spruce up your LinkedIn profile and to use LinkedIn for what it's really supposed to be used for, which is making connections, networking, and generating business revenue because of the connections that you've made. So very excited. Thank you for being a listener. I look forward to giving this episode to you and you can learn a ton from it. All right, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of the Sage Mindset Podcast. And like I said in the intro, I'm excited to have Daniel Alphon with us today and to dive into LinkedIn. I know that I often have struggled to figure out what the heck to put on my profile to make it look good. And I've changed it so many times that I don't even want to share. And if you're like me at all, this episode is going to be super helpful for you. So thank you, Daniel, for being here. I'm excited to have you. Welcome. Hey, Kyle, thank you very much for having me on the Stage Mindset. Awesome. So if you could, can you tell us just a brief history of What got you to the point where now you're the guru when it comes to doing LinkedIn profiles and helping people really leverage LinkedIn in a way that makes it work instead of just having a thousand contacts, you actually have people that are caring about your business and you may get some business from. Thank you very much. You're right. You're too kind. Uh, I had the, uh, the opportunity to sign up to LinkedIn pretty early. It was early 2004. Uh, simply because I got an invitation from someone I trusted. And I figured if this person has tried this, and then I'd better try and, and see what it is. The concept of social was uh, pretty uh, uh, new then. Right. And two years later, I had uh, a sales position I, with quote, I was carrying a quota. And um, at one day, LinkedIn simply showed me the name of the person I needed to reach out to. And back then, that enabled me to cut at least a third of my sales cycle. So that's the moment I decided that I want to, uh, wanted to check what LinkedIn was about. And ever since I specialized in this platform, and since you hit record, 100 people have joined LinkedIn. Each second, Kyle, two people sign up. Wow. Really? It's that? Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> that's amazing. Now, if they could only be signing up for, for uh, doing stuff with us, right? <laughs> that's the next. Uh, absolutely. That's the next gear. Uh, when, when you think about LinkedIn and, and the way that people use it, what do, what do people often get wrong about this social network? Well, everyone gets um, a bit confused about LinkedIn. I was listening to a, a Sage Mindset episode you, held, you released with uh, Brian Clayton, and you asked him about his first hire. And he said, of course, I remember I did it wrong. Mm. So... There are many misunderstandings about the the platform. And the first thing we need to remember if we own a small or medium-sized business is that the fact that LinkedIn is good for recruiters and hiring does not need to impact our use of LinkedIn as people in SMBs. If hiring is important for us, then fine, we can use it that, that way. But if we're interested in, in growing our business and hiring is not such a central part of our uh, uh, day-to-day uh, activities, then we need to think of LinkedIn as a profile, as a, as a website that needs to convert ide- our ideal reader. And basically, our ideal reader is the, the prospect we'd like to attract. You say website and profile, it makes me realize that LinkedIn really is a, a is kind of the top of the funnel, if you will, for a lot of the connections that we're making with people to ultimately, in some cases, become clients or customers with us. Can you, talk a little, can you talk a little bit about that concept of LinkedIn as a funnel? Because I think a lot of people miss that 
it's not just reach out to someone and ask them if they want to do business with you. It's a little bit, a little bit more steps than that. Sure. The, uh, what I found was that the best content on LinkedIn is educational top of funnel content. So if we take an example of, of uh, uh, business owners in, in SMB, then the questions we can ask are what sort of content are our ideal prospect struggling? What sort of questions do they ask themselves? Do they hesitate if, if they need to invest in that type of software? Or are they curious about what the next step, what the next step in business means for them? Then finding the questions our ideal prospects struggle with and producing or curating content that answers their questions is the best way for them to discover us. And like you justly said, Kyle, the conversion usually happens outside of the LinkedIn funnel. It happens on our website. So our, our, our profile should simply help people decide that going to sage, sagemindset.com is their next logical step. And that's even more important than whether they send you a connection request or not. Mm. So really LinkedIn, your profile and everything on it ultimately needs to create a CTA call to action that moves them to click, to go to my website or to look me up. And if, if my profile, if my articles, if whatever I'm doing on LinkedIn isn't pointing people to go to my con high converting website, hopefully, which is a whole nother conversation, but if it's not... If it's not doing that, then LinkedIn isn't serving my business. If, like you said, you qualified all this with, you're not looking to use LinkedIn to hire people, but you're using LinkedIn to, to get prospects, then it needs to have that clear call to action to get to my website. What does it, what does it look like to help LinkedIn's, my profile, anybody else's profile to get to that place? What are some of the key components? Okay. If you remember the, the way that your LinkedIn uh, profile looks, then the first thing, the first three seconds will be uh, determined by the use of a banner and your headline. Okay, so when people visit your own LinkedIn profile, what, what they see is sage mindset. Okay, this is what they, they see as a banner. So it doesn't answer all their questions, but it should intrigue them. And I believe it's intriguing. And at this point, we need to dip up to, to read a bit more and to see. So the headline, that's the most expensive and the most precious real estate on our profile. Instead of saying, you know, I am the CEO of Kyle Gillette, and that's what, what many other people would do. You make it about them. You say, grow your business and transform your leadership with Sage Mindset Coaching. So you're presenting yourself as the solution, but you start with them. And way, way too many business owner Kyle start with themselves. Like I'm the owner, I'm the CXO, and the whatever uh, God's great greatest gift to humanity. But, <laughs> but it's hard to see how they help their prospect. And no one is interested in us. People are only interested in the way we can help them transform their business and their career and their lives. Yeah, so the that headline for people that aren't, super familiar with LinkedIn or it's kind of new terminology. Can you, can you tell people just where that, I know where it is, but where, where is that headline? Because it is extremely important. With pleasure. When they, when they look someone up, the only meaningful text they will see is the headline. So if, if they visit your profile, they see the headline right beneath your name. Okay. And most people have a headline. The headline by default would be the title of their current position and the name of the company. Okay, so if I'm a, a DevOps manager at Cisco, it would say Daniel, DevOps manager at Cisco. I'm not saying it's automatically a bad headline, but if you'd like to tweak it, and if that that's, doesn't help your client understand why they need to read more, then you can tweak the headline itself without changing anything about the current position. One of the things that I've learned in marketing is comments and likes and how you engage those comments and likes. What are your suggestions or your perspective on the importance of those and what we can do with them as we're trying to generate more connections and next steps with, with prospects? Okay. So uh, the first question I, was, I would ask is about the amount of time, Kyle, you can commit to uh, use on LinkedIn on a weekly basis. 
Mm -hmm. And I would start by asking how, uh, if you can stick to that amount of time, at least three months ahead. And some of our listeners here can, can say, you know, only 10 minutes, that's fine. But can you really commit to 10 minutes a week for three months or not? Now, if you only have 10 minutes, commenting and sharing should not be your priority. If you have an hour or close to 45, 60 minutes, then commenting, liking, sharing, and, and sharing in general would be great. The, the uh, um, thing I would do if I had only five or 10 minutes, and if I had one stellar profile and two connections I knew well, is visit the, not, the notification uh, tab and see what is, what is my network up to. And on desktop, the notifications bar would show two very important elements. If a connection of yours has updated their profile saying they have started a new position, then you would see it there. And in other cases, you would see also uh, birthdays of your network. Now, obviously, if you have 10 minutes and your, uh, your network says 1,000 people, maybe it will have three birthdays, or maybe you'll have you know, a number that it's manageable. Maybe you'll say only this person is important enough for me to do something about it. And my advice would be to actually leave LinkedIn. So if you see that a person has moved or has been promoted or has, has their birthday, so instead of clicking the cut cookie cutter, happy birthday, congrats, look them up, scroll down to see if they, they, they have updated their profile today. But does it necessarily mean they joined the, the new company today? No. In some cases, they updated their profile today, but they uh, joined that company six months ago. And it makes no sense to say congrats. You actually should ask how they've been because maybe something is wrong there. Maybe they're looking for something else. So spend, at least with those that are important to you, spend a few more seconds to see what, it, what they're really up to when they join the company. Is it a, have they been promoted within the same uh, corporation? Have they moved from Washington state to, to uh, California? Have they, is there anything you can meaningfully comment on and try to take that conversation outside of LinkedIn? Email would be best for most of our listeners, I presume. Yeah, so do you, we got to do a little bit of homework uh, even, in, in, even in those comments, but LinkedIn makes it easy to do that homework because people are updating their profiles. You can look at their resume and, and check out what's going on. I think about followers. So I have or listen, or um, uh, connections, and I know there's a difference between followers and connections, and that might be worth talking about in a minute here. But I have 4,200, 4,300 connections, I think is, is the number. So I don't know if that's big or small, whatever. It's really the value of those connections that's most important, I'm guessing. But can you talk to us about connections? And what are those really? What are connections really? And how, how do we... I don't want to say leverage because that sounds a little bit too impersonal, but how do we quote use those connections? Okay. I like the question. So I'll start by asking if you had to pick one of those in three years time, would you rather be the most connected or the best connected? Right. And the secret no one will tell you is that either can work, but you have to pick one. Mm. Why do I mean, what do I mean by that? If you want to be the most connected, then it makes sense to grow your network and to reach 30,000 connections as soon as possible. And the greatest upside is exposure. If you share something on LinkedIn, if you comment, if you like whatever public action you, you, you perform on LinkedIn, it means many people will see because your network has a huge size. There's another way to look at it. And that's the uh, uh, angle of quality. If you want to connect with people you know well, then exposure is not what you'll get. What, but, but what you will benefit from, however, is trust. In other words, if I run a search and I focus on second degree contacts, that means I share at least one mutual connections with them. And I see that Jane Doe is a mutual connection of ours. And I know Jane Doe, then I could leave LinkedIn communicate with Jane, ask her as she's been at, at one point, say, I see you're connected with Kyle Gillette. I, I wanted to reach out to him and ask him a question. Do you know him well enough to make an introduction? And in that case, if she says yes, it means I grabbed your attention, not thanks to my name, which you don't know, 
but thanks to th that mutual connections link. And what I said by you have to pick one is that SMB owners and many LinkedIn users are afraid to make a choice. So they mm -hmm. want both quality and quantity. And the trouble is they're mutually exclusive. Because if you had to thousands of connections, at one point you end up not knowing those people. And if you only stick to people you know well, you can't have thousands upon thousands of connections. And the, probably the worst uh, um, position to be in is start by having a quality network, say X amount of people you know well, and then deciding you want more exposure, but you never reach that exposure. Like 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 is not a lot of exposure on LinkedIn because most of our connections are not going to see what is it that you shared. Okay, many people simply visit LinkedIn once a week or whatever, when, when they get an invitation request, they will check LinkedIn and, and then they will, they will disappear. It gets a bit more complicated with the uh, uh, creator mode and, and following, but in terms of connections, pure connections, pick, pick a lane that you're going to stick with for years to come and try not to veer because the price of switching is a lot of time and it's probably not worth it. Hmm. What would you, how would you suggest that people decide on which lane to pick? What are some of the markers? Is it important for you to be read and, and seen by many people? Or would you, if, if I see that we share a mutual connection, I reach out to that person, would you, uh, would it be okay for you if they said, I have no idea who Kyle Gillette is? Or would you rather say, no, I, I want them, I want to be able to know my network? Mm -hmm. Some people will say, no, that's fine with me. I, I, I prefer exposure. Other people will say, no, I'm, I'm, if you are able to ask for referrals and if referral is, is a, a meaningful way for you to gain new clients, then a quality network makes sense. Yeah. Because referrals, what I found in, in my own uh, business is that referrals are less price sensitive they come almost as warm leads because someone has spoken with them and they answered questions about you. So they, they, the conversation itself is a lot more comfortable and they end up sending you new uh, clients themselves. So if, if you think that referrals are important for you, I would start with a quality network. And if you, uh, if you, if, if you produce a lot of content, high quality educational evergreen content, then probably my suggestion would be to turn on the creator mode and that would enable people to follow you. Like you rightly said, you have 4,000 followers and, and you, you may have a different number of connections, okay? Maybe in five years time, the, the number will, will completely change. Yeah, I, I like that. I'm thinking along the lines of the quality, the referral side of things is you have a much, you have a business that's much more personal in interaction with the client or the customer. And then the, the quantity is it's less personal. It doesn't mean you don't care about the people that you you're helping, but it's just less personal. So it doesn't, it's more of a, maybe more product based or a little bit easier, maybe a software as a service type industry. I, it, that's what I'm kind of hearing. Am I on track with, with that? Yeah, I think it's a great way to, to put it. Yes. Okay, awesome. Who are awesome. the business if, if people if people don't go for for a sage mindset and say give me the, the uh, consultant that's free if they want you then it's more personal. Yeah. In other types of business it, it's less personal and, and the business owner should, should know it. It's not a different uh, difficult questions for them to answer. Right, right. Before listeners, before Daniel and I started talking today, he sent me some really sweet graphics that succinctly explain what he does and one jumped out to me it's a, it's a quadrant uh just four four little quadrants labeled one two three four and i'd love for you to explain that because when i looked at it, i went oh i'm really getting it and and how this thing works so if you could please please explain it to folks so that we can so they can understand as well thank you very much with pleasure kyle so uh, um Let's imagine uh, um, an, X, an X axis and a Y axis, and maybe in the show notes, people can, can have a look at it. So the X axis uh, uh, shows the number of connections we have. Okay, so when we sign up, we have zero connections, and gradually we move to the right. 
If we have 40 connections, we're closer to the left. If we have 4,000 or 40,000, we're closer to the right. Now I'd like to draw attention to the y-axis, and that's the amount of information you're providing your reader in order for them to understand that you're part of the solution that they need. So obviously, guys, if you provided no information, no information, you win the lower uh, uh, quadrant. And if you provided them with the right keywords, with a great banner, with an inviting headline, and with good uh, rich media and explanation and, and, and keywords, that means you're in the upper quadrant. And the first question I would ask is what, what when you look at the, uh, the graph here, which quadrant you think is best in the long term? Which quadrant should SMB owners try to head to? Eventually, what number would you like to be? Yeah, I mean, depends on the business, but ultimately the upper right would be nice to be able to scale or maybe even the upper left, because if you don't need to scale a ton and you can get a few clients and that will help you with your business than those two, but it's definitely going to be in the top. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So if, if you look at the top right, what it adds to the conversion aspect, like you, right, you rightly said, is exposure. So ideally, when we want to reach number four, and that's, that enables us to scale our business because anyone who visits our profile both understands what we bring to the table and is likely to find us, then let's imagine, Kyle, you had only two ways to get there. One way would be to start by connecting with people and then looking at your profile and improving it. And the second method would be to build a decent profile that answers people's question mm -hmm. and then connect with people. If you had to pick one lane, which makes more sense to you? First, yeah, I mean, I, I want them to know a ton about me first before they want to connect with me because then they can disqualify themselves and, and we're not wasting one another's time. Cool. And the last question I would ask, do you think that most of our listeners here have done that? In other words, have most listeners improved their profile before caring about connections? Or could it be that some people have dedicated a lot of effort to growing their network without having a converting profile? Yeah, I mean, I would, I'm guessing that most people, they put a ton of work into growing their, growing their connections, but when the connections see the profile, it's, they're confused. Probably they're getting confused when they look at that profile. What's what's going on with this person? I'm sure I've done that. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I, again, there is so many mistakes. I, I made all the mistakes. That I don't want to sound uh, too too righteous about it. The thing is that just imagine I would run a Google campaign and I would own the top result for Kyle Gillette. But imagine the whole if if number one result would show me a page that only says under construction. <laughs> That's the exact equivalent of growing your network and scaling when your profile doesn't convert. So I'm not saying conversions, uh, uh, connections are unimportant. They are important, but they make a lot, they enable you to have a lot more impact if you dedicate time to growing your network after your profile converts. I love the idea of, my profile, when people look at it, they go, it just says under construction because <laughs> it's confusing and gets people lost. Or when they get there, do they see, oh, I understand what this guy does. It, he could be of help to me. I want to learn more. So I'm going to check out his articles. Maybe I'm going to go to his website, that type of thing. When when I think about all the iterations of my profile, it, it's it's ridiculous how many different times I've typed things up and researched and everything. And you've simplified this for me, for sure. And I'm sure for listeners as well. It's it's really not that complicated. It's, you want to create a call to action to go to the website. What are some of the key components that need to be on your full profile? Not just that about me part, but the full profile. What are some some tips or tricks that you could share with us? Okay, I'll, I'll start by uh, making a distinction between our profile and our page for SMB owners, okay? And uh, a counterintuitive uh, fact we need to take into account is that for SMB owners, the page, the company page on LinkedIn is not important. It's a static page. What's important is our individual profile. So forget about the page for now. Uh, if you, uh, if your staff, 
exceeds a thousand employees, then care about the page. But for now, forget about the page and only focus on your individual profile because that, that is uh, the origin of 99% of your leads. Mm. So what can we plan about that? If we could add to this call a number of ideal prospects, then my question would be, if you, if you could share your screen and show them links, resources, videos, images, what are the top three to four uh, resources, shall we say, that you'd like, that are likeliest to, to make people convert and, get, and want to learn more about you? So each business owner should have their own answers. Maybe it would be download the, their app or going to the, the website or registering for a forthcoming event or, or reaching out to them through a contact page or listening to their uh, podcast or whatever it is. Now the question is, ha have they shown visitors of their profile that information in the right order in a way that will make most of their ideal prospect understand that they want to reach out to them? So like you said, I don't believe in, in, in uh, hard work just for the, for the sake of our hard work. You have put a lot of hard work into creating your website, but reflecting that on LinkedIn can be done in less than a minute and it's worth doing. So adding your best links under featured or under the experience section is one great way to enrich your profile and to make people stick and to learn, ah, okay, so you're doing this and you're providing that. All right, now, like you said, they could disqualify themselves, but these are usually the people you want to disqualify anyway. And those that stick are have a much better understanding of the services you provide or the product you offer and are likelier to engage in a meaningful conversation with you. And reading other people's profile is a quick way for you to see good examples and bad examples. If you're on a simple search and you, and you browse through 40 profiles, you'll notice some that have tweaked their profile to do X. So Kyle, you don't have to copy or duplicate that X. You just say, okay. So understand they have made that choice and that doesn't resonate with me, but now I know what I want to do on my own profile. And I want to change that and to bring it closer to my specialty or my, my clientele. And simply reading other people's profile is, is an exercise, free exercise that will enable anyone to improve uh, their profile in a tremendous way. Yeah, I've read a few profiles where I have taken action because the profile funneled me down into the action they wanted me to take, which is was typically not to schedule a call with them. That's that's like, you know, you're going from seeing them on the street to going on a date without even having a conversation. It doesn't, that doesn't work. So they sent me to their website essentially and, you know, clicked on it and checked it out and went from there. Uh, one of the, one of the things that I learned, and I don't know if I should unlearn it or not, was when someone comments on an article mm -hmm. that you wrote that you can comment back to them, which is valuable to do, but also to directly outreach to them and message them on LinkedIn. What are your thoughts on that approach? I think that the most important uh, thing that to remember from what you said is the importance of leaving LinkedIn at one point. Mm. And, and this, I tell you this as someone whose uh, business is built around LinkedIn, okay? The real secret is to know when to leave LinkedIn. And you don't have necessarily to shout at this person from, from the conversation at one point, and you will know when the right point, when you've reached the right point. Maybe you will answer them and, and, and take the next step. And at one point, you will either send them a, con a connection request or visit the website and message them. And the conversation is likely to be more meaningful after you've um, identified a, a certain opportunity. So there are two things to remember. One, you need to be polite and, and, and answer their question or comment on what it, what it, is, it is they uh, commented upon because everyone can see that. But nothing prevents you, Kyle, from taking the extra step. And instead of turning LinkedIn into a salesy pitch for everyone just for the sake of that person, it makes a lot more sense not to dilute your message and not to make people feel you're a spammy individual, but to reach out to them and maybe send them a resource that is relevant for, for their, and maybe take, take the next baby step 
and and you can qualify all sorts of uh, great uh, prospects that way. Yeah. So once once you've made that, once they've made a comment on your article, then you're able to connect with them and and give them additional value is what I'm understanding here. So that kind of implies yep. that I need I need to have this stuff at the ready. You know, what are, what are my top, what are my top things that my prospects really want back to what you said at the beginning? And I think it's, it's worth talking about again, which is what do they want? How can I serve them? How can I help them? And, and ask the questions of the prospect, kind of look at it from their angle, uh, because then, then you can truly provide value to them when you're thinking about what they want, instead of thinking about, okay, well, what I need is I need new business, I need new business. <laughs> and that totally skews your view when you, you're up. Absolutely- when you think about that, what what advice do you have for people to to create that content that gets people more interested in in me and what I do or in in their listeners and what they do, so that we can jump away from the website? Because I've never really thought about that. Networks try to keep you on their network as much as possible, but they need to get into my real network, which is my business, or or I need to get into their real network, which is their website. Uh, so what are some of the key things that I could be sending to them or, or, or some suggestions on how to add that value in that one-to-one interaction on LinkedIn before we jump to the next step? All right. So I like the question. I'll try to provide a couple of, of uh, quick thoughts. If you could interview a couple of potential clients of yours or get back to the point where you're asking yourself naive questions you need to identify the question they're struggling with. And why do, I, why, why do I say naive? Because you know so much, Kyle, about your business that the terms you'll think of are not necessarily the terms of the questions they would actually use. Because you know a lot more about it and, and maybe some of your prospects will enter terms that you look, that you look down upon and you think they're not uh, um, correct or they're imperfect and they're not uh, uh, the right ones, but it doesn't matter. If you call it self-awareness and they call it effectiveness, then you need to understand the way they think. If you call it growth and they call it something else, we, it will take a process for them maybe to hear you out and to decide that what you have to offer is the right thing for them. But getting as close as possible to their mind and their thoughts and their terms is the best way to decide what sort of content you'd like to provide. And perhaps a quick tip around this, if you can uh, encapsulate an an idea of yours and take them from point A to point B, just showing them one very uh, uh, small baby step that's in the right direction for them, then at the end of that journey, you say, I can also show you point C. And for that, you can go and download that gated content or for that schedule, strategy, whatever it is that makes sense for you, you provide value from point A to point B in the, in the segment that's most crucial for them. So if they struggle with four options, you don't sell one option. You try to generally make them understand the pro and cons of all four options. And then you say, if the, the, you... You, just like you said, you help those to disqualify and qualify. So if they're not the right fit for you, you show them why they're not a good fit. And if they are, you say, there's a lot more to this I could help you with. And here's the next step. If you are able to do that, then you, the conversation is, is likely to be more uh, relevant. And it's very important to understand that the metrics that count are not LinkedIn metrics. The metrics that should count are business metrics. Mm. Yeah, talk to us about that a little bit. With pleasure. It, it's really, it's a, it's a no-brainer. But at the end of the day, you don't go to sleep and you say, wow, I'm, I'm popular. I have a gazillion connections or, or thousands, uh, thousands of people have, have liked my comments. You try to measure the revenues the downloads, the subscribers, the inquiries, the orders, the dollars. And you can think of LinkedIn as a black box and you need to make sure that that black box feeds the right business metrics. And like you said, 
top of funnel or inquiries or conversion is the best way to leverage LinkedIn. So if you had, before using LinkedIn, you had four calls, four strategy call of, from, from uh, a qualified uh, prospects, and you use LinkedIn and you're able to have six strategy calls a month, then any revenue you can trace to those extra two calls, you've, you've accomplished them thanks to things you've done on LinkedIn. And that, that means for, for SMB owners, you don't need to understand LinkedIn. You just need to understand your business. Because if you see that you're having more growth and more uh, uh, inquiries and you can turn that into revenues, then you're going in the right direction. Right, right. If LinkedIn actually converts for you, no matter what else you're doing on there, that part doesn't matter near as much because you're actually converting. <laughs> when, I, when I look at, I clicked over to my, my dashboard over here. I have a dashboard that has things that I'm tracking, some goals, but also how I've converted clients. And so I have this set of clients that I've converted over the last two years that I'm tracking. And of them, only four have come from LinkedIn, which is approximately 7% of my clientele. Okay. And I'm guessing that from what you're talking about here, that number could easily be higher. Yes, I would try and dive and see those 7%. How exactly, what was the process they uh, engaged with on LinkedIn? Did they send you an invitation request? Because in some cases, when uh, we also didn't mention it, but when people Google the business owner's name, in many cases, their LinkedIn profile would top the list. Mm -hmm. And that means that when, when I run a search and I find you and I see that we share mutual connections, then at one point as, as a, a, a potential client of yours, I would leave LinkedIn. I would speak with uh, that mutual connection. And if what they tell me is that you need to speak to Kyle, then I'll convert elsewhere. Maybe you, you won't even know that I uh, used LinkedIn at, at any one point because I went to your website, I registered, I downloaded your app, and then maybe four months, maybe I'm not ready today. Maybe I will only uh, uh, be mature enough to work with you as a paying client in, in six months' time. So it, it's not easy to trace uh, everything to, to, uh, to LinkedIn, and I don't think that LinkedIn should be the only source, but LinkedIn should help you uh, um, make more people discover you. And, and if you remember that networking is way more important than LinkedIn, then my revenues are basically not uh, uh, attributed to LinkedIn. They're attributed to my network. Mm -hmm. But whenever a new client looks me up and they look at LinkedIn or look at my website and see someone and they reach out to them, that person is likely to say, yeah, you need to speak with that person. And, and that is why networking counts to me more than LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the tool. It's important. But real life network and real life relationships are way, way, way more important than any tool. Right. So really the two, the two big keys I'm hearing here is one, if you're going to use LinkedIn, make it be a call to action to get them to leave LinkedIn and interact with you in your world, because that's a way better world for them to be interacting with you. And number two, use LinkedIn to have actual conversations with people, to network with people for real, whether it's in person, on the phone or on Zoom or whatever method. But that, that's the real value of LinkedIn versus 27,000 followers that that has value but not near as much as what what we're talking about here yeah i think having a system is uh, is the best kept uh, secret in town and and i don't want to impose my system like you have your system our listeners have theirs but if they are able to listen to this and ask themselves questions okay kai has mentioned this and daniel has mentioned that I, i'd like to tweak it to 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 uh, be aligned with my style then the system they'll end up with is much better than yours or mine. Right, right. Yeah, get the principles figured out and then tweak it to fit my business exactly. And I, yeah, I love that. I love it. Uh, if, if you were to give someone, you know, one, one good tip to make an adjustment to their approach to LinkedIn right now, whether it's their webs, whether it's their uh, interactions on there or the way it appears, what would that one good tip be that they could do today to make a little bit of a change that would impact in the long run? Okay, <laughs> so here's what I would do. I would ask them to uh, um, ask someone to look them up on LinkedIn, mm. ideally someone they're not connected with, and to ask that person to say what they think when they look at their profile. 
It could be someone they know, but it doesn't really matter for now. So what, what would happen is that when they look at your profile, the way they think is important and you would be amazed in some cases with the comments people are going to make. So if they go and visit your profile, do they click? Do they tap? Do they scroll? Where, what did they do after 20 seconds? That is something you need to understand. And unfortunately, we cannot be like a fly on the wall in real life and, and see it for a thousand people. But even if you do it with one person or two, three people, and you see that everyone has clicked there and nothing is there, then you thank them and you go and tweak your profile and you improve it. So like you said earlier, leave your comfort zone and try to get closer to them. And when you understand what, they're, what actions they're likely to perform and the questions they ask themselves, you can reverse engineer your whole LinkedIn presence in a way that will serve them. Our profile, your profile is not here to serve you, Kyle. Neither is my profile here to serve me. Our profiles should serve our ideal prospect. I love that. I think that that, both those, I mean, you kind of gave us two tips. You gave kind of like a philosophy there, but then also this tip and the idea that my profile is not my profile. Like it's not for me, it's for them. And it's funny because when I interact with clients, I frequently tell them the platinum rule, which is treat others the way they want to be treated. And that's application of the platinum rule to my LinkedIn profile. Well, how do they want to be treated when they see my profile? They want to, they want to get something out of it. They, they need to get a benefit of reading my profile. I'm, they're giving me their time to research me, to look me up. So I need to honor that time and do a good job with my profile. If it's lame, like it might actually be right now, then then I'm kind of dishonoring them and wasting their time. And that's not very nice. And I don't, I want to be nice. <laughs> so I really appreciate that, that insight there. And then reaching out to people and saying, Hey, check out my profile. What, what do you see? What did you do? And then probably offering an exchange that doing it for them as well would be, that's what a, what a out of the box approach to seeing what's going on with your profile. And it would be very effective. I mean, you're going to get that blunt perspective on it. And, and I think that whatever they give you, whatever they share is going to help you significantly because especially if you pick the right person that could be a potential client, uh, that's going to make a big difference. Right. Uh, if, if they can think like your ideal prospect, then it, it's the best. And if they're frank, they will tell you, Hey, I don't get this. What did you mean by that? And if you can try to delay your answer and say, that's a good point. Let's discuss that later and keep them in the zone because the, the idea is not to answer them now the, your profile should speak for itself yeah what you understood Kyle, is that they didn't understand it back in real life when they looked at it they didn't understand it and if you hear that from you know three out of four people you thank them and you go and, and you go back to the drawing board and you try to simplify or to tweak it yep i love it so this some of this can be challenging to figure out and I know that I've, I've been messing around with my profile for years now as it relates to my business. And I've gotten some connections that way. But for the most part, you know, I get the spam that says, hey, do you want to open a gym? And it's because at one point on my profile, I, I worked at a, a tennis club. It's like, no, I don't want to open a gym. What are you, are you actually putting any effort into this? But that says something to me, too, that my profile is a little bit broken. So. I'm probably not the only one with a broken profile. And for the listeners that also have a profile that's not doing what it's supposed to do, what's the best way for them to connect with you and, and do this a little bit more custom and learn from you and be able to get more insight from how to update the profile and generate more opportunities? Thank you very much. I think you're being too harsh on yourself. <laughs> my, uh, the best way to, to do it is to go to my website. That's danielalfon.com. Daniel, A L F. O N, and they can anyone can can see articles and in the store and guides and a, and a giveaway, lo, lots of uh, content that will a, that will help them ask the right question. And if they want to take the next step, I'll be glad to hear from them. Awesome. Well, this was super helpful personally, and if it was personally helpful for me, I know it was helpful for the listeners as well. So, thank you from me and from them. Uh, I appreciate your time and and your insights today. Guys, Sage Mindset rocks. Thank you very much. Thank you.